We're back again to play some games. We are back with the last episode of Mayday Memory. We've been playing this game for a while now, and it's finally done. So we're going to do the last chapter, and I'll come back at some point <laughs> once I uh, get someone's, someone's affection all the way up. And I don't know how long that's going to take because, you know, I'm kind of lazy. So before we get started, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Follow me on my social media. It's all in the description below. And we can get started. Episode 36. The rest is omitted. Epilogue. Okay. It all happened in a flash. As soon as I realized I had grabbed Adrian, I was already lying on the ground. So she just fell all the way. Is Dell broken? Is she, is, she, is she good? The building had already completely collapsed all around us. The ground was covered in debris and dust. On the side were the robots we had seen from the rooftop. Some of them crushed by the building, crashing down on top of them. The energy I had just felt while falling through the sky was now all but exhausted. I'm back. But you fell, are you good? Is Adrian good? I'm back to my regular me. Looking at my wristwatch, it was no longer spinning like crazy. But it wasn't still either. It was ticking along just like any other watch, as if it had never been broken to begin with. Please let go of me, Del. Still trying to get my bearings, I didn't realize I was still holding Adrian tightly with one arm. Right, sorry. I let go of him. He touched the wound he had gotten on his forehead from the falling debris. He then casually asked me, as if we hadn't just fallen from a skyscraper, Why did you save me? Why I saved you? Because of what Chris said? Because of the promise of Eugen? No. I saved you because I wanted to, Adrian. Adrian listened to my reply, closed his eyes, and started laughing. <laughs> Honestly, I can't help but admit it now. You're truly amazing, Dale. I noticed that his expression had gotten just a tad brighter. Has he changed? Did I really manage to change him? Adrian, are you okay? Hmm? What do you mean? All of it. Are you alright? Adrian laughed loudly, as if I had told him a funny joke. Hmm. I don't think I can say I'm completely fine. How should I put it? I do feel a bit better, though. Really? I wanted to ask, but I was not able to. Right at that moment, a loud noise nearby indicated that Jeff had landed his plane. Del, are you okay? Wait a minute, did no one else see that just a moment ago? From Del's body, light. Hansel instantly covered Jeff's mouth shut. Jeff, that was Del's surprise for you. Pretend you didn't see it. She had prepared it for when you had come back. Uh, I see, so that's what that was. I shouldn't have said anything. Jeff coughed awkwardly, looked away, and started to whistle. Ahem, Del, I saw nothing at all. How did that happen? I am really curious. He's just making it worse at this point. Jeff turned around to Adrian. Adrian, so what are your plans now? Are we going to let him go? Can we arrest him? He, he's, he has to have some kind of punishment. He needs to go to jail for like a couple couple years. At least do community service. Adrian, so what are your plans now? Everything will slowly go back to how it was. We'll give back the memories to the rightful owners. Okay. Then Sid's eyes gleamed and he looked towards the city. The police? Just as he said it, I could hear the distant sound of police sirens getting closer. The noise made me feel dizzy, but Adrian just closed his eyes, enjoying the sound. Del, like you said, I'm not running away anymore. In the dark corner of the city, he looked towards where the sirens had come from with a determined look. 
her laugh weekly. Just a moment ago, I had put all my energy into saving Adrian. I really wanted to look happier in this situation. Shortly after the police arrived, they got out of their cars and moved out inf information. They start yelling at Adrian. Get away from the girl, or else we'll shoot. Don't shoot. What's up, just take him in. Without even flinching, he shrugged and put his hands up in the air. With his hands up, he spoke quietly so that only I could hear. With a tone as still and peaceful as a lake on a windless day, I won't run away. I'll stay right here. I'll stay and run away. Without thinking anything. Without doing anything. Man, you don't just go to jail and do some community service and come back out. Something's wrong. I can feel intense fear rapidly going all the way up my spine. What are you talking about, Adrian? This is not it. Your expression just a moment ago. Your eyes had changed. Why would you? You were begging me to save you. It was then I realized this was evil. Each syllable leaving his mouth, without exception, were completely and utterly evil. I failed to save Adrian. You can't save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. Adrian slowly lowered one of his arms and grabbed my hand. Hey, I said get away! Aim! Doesn't the guns were aimed at Adrian's back? Adrian, please, this isn't it. But he just smiled and put my hand on his lips. Then he said, Maybe you really can save me. Maybe in the next life. Adrian let go of my hand. Due to the shock, the arm fell down to my side powerless. He then started to leisurely walk in between the guns aimed at him. He walked seemingly without care in the world. He didn't look back even once. Completely lacking any expression, he got into the back of the police van. Then they drove off. Uh, I didn't get to say goodbye. What did he tell you before he left? Sid looked at me with a curious look, but I couldn't tell him everything. He said he wouldn't run away. Uh, that's a relief. I feel like he's changed his mind. All thanks to our lovely robot girl, don't you think? Sid gave me a bright smile, but I was unable to smile back. I still kept looking at the police van Adrian was in until it was out, out of sight. Do you think he'll be okay? Nah, he's completely lost his mind. I only had one response to that question. I don't know. Whatever, can we celebrate? <laughs> I wanna throw a party. A few days later, Can you stop wasting so much oxygen? You're just speeding up global warming. What? Am I not allowed to breathe? Have you gone and become a neo-hippie or something? If you really plan on being a neo-hippie, just give up. You will just be letting down a depressed blonde guy anyways. She so just raised an eyebrow and asked, Anyone here know why she's being like this? Because of Adrian? After all, Del too has feelings, guilt, embarrassment, Hopelessness, longing for forbidden love, you know, that sort of thing. What? Forbidden love? Between between who exactly? Ah, that was something I saw on a TV show earlier. Don't joke around and say stuff like that. But we still have another trick up our sleeves, right? You know, that thing we have to do now? What? Will it work with that thing? We can't know until we try. Have you called Ann? He said it's a bit late getting the cake. Great, while we're waiting, I'll take care of Del's mood. I gave Jeff a stare, telling him to stay away, but he was determined to annoy me. Hey Del, what are you thinking about? Nothing. Not you. I think you should ask something better than what are you thinking about. Uh, I'll just ask something else then. How about this? Tell me about that robot thing. I'm still not used to it. You not being a human and all? Well, same here. I feel like I'm too warm-hearted for a robot. Too human-y. Well, that's amazing. I was about to say the exact opposite. 
Right before our fight broke out between us, the front door of the office suddenly flew open. Hello, am I late? Hurry on in. You're earlier than expected. Ann is here. Ann. Ah, oh, what a relief. I take it the party has yet to start? Mode, where's my rabbit earless robot buddy? Beep boop. Three centimeters to your left. Oh, Dell, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Here, take this cake. What's the occasion? You should take it slow. You just recovered your memories. Why the cake? Ah, I have no time to rest. You see, I heard today is Dell's birthday party. I'm sure what Anne was talking about. I looked up the other guys. Today's my birthday? Hey, the exact date isn't important. Today is your birthday. I told you back then that we'd have a party for you. Remember? Then you back, I vaguely recall him talking about something like that. What? Hansel, when is my birthday? You were talking about the day I first booted you up? It's not today. But let's just say it's today. Hey, even if it isn't today, when was it? Just let me know what month and what day. No, I can't. Why? Let the day you were first started up be A, and the day we randomly decided to be your birthday today be B. Then if we were to find out the exact day of A, even if we were, ugh, this is confusing, Hansel. Yeah, I'm not reading all that. Whoa, the cake is so pretty. I'm sorry, Hansel. What were you saying? Hansel, I'm sorry. That was just too much. Like I said the last time, this is compensating for two missed birthdays. So after today, you'll be two years older. Is that a good thing? Hmm, in some ways, I guess. About three years ago, I stopped liking it, though. Listen here, I'll summarize this for you. Before you hit 20, it's always a good thing. That's a really good point. After that, the world becomes a dark place. Becoming an adult is tricky business. It's not easy. I think you should save saying that until you become an adult yourself. Oh, are you saying I look young? This is why you're my favorite. And I completely forgot how Just Brain was wired and turned everything possible into compliments. Anyhow, among us here, the only one who should like getting older is Del. How about Mode? Mold is older than Anne. Mold has lived a long time. Oh my, but you're so small and cute. <laughs> Mold doesn't like being called small, Anne. Ah, is that so? My mistake. Mold is big, super huge. Hmm. You see, Mold has a complex about having some short arms. <laughs> you see, Mold has a complex about having short arms and legs. Isn't Mold just the cutest? Mo gave a very disapproving look. Uh, did I say that too loud? Mo gave a very approving look. Ah, oh, what a relief. Thanks to Jeff, I barely escaped Mo's look of hate. What? No, Mo. I humbly beg for your forgiveness, your enormous highness. I suspect Jeff will have to bring Mo carrot oil every day for a couple of weeks. Well then, shall we begin? The birthday party, that is. Let's turn the lights off. We turn off the lights in the office, aside from the mood lighting Jeff had brought for some reason ages ago. Perfect, now let's sing a birthday song for Dell together. You don't need to. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. The rest is omitted. We don't, we don't want to get a copyright. Del, eat this. For I could dodge, sit. See, I do not. So, we do, I do not play that. Do not waste that cake. Do not waste that cake. I hate wasted food. Before I could dodge, sit hath thrown a cake in my face. Slowly, the slippery whipped cream made the cake slide down my face. I stood for a moment completely silent before I sit noticed. Uh, sorry, you're mad, aren't you? No. Not really. Then let's do it again. No! Uh, can we just eat the cake? Instantly, I got hit by a second round of cake alter alter artillery. Aww. 
the cute picture. I can't make it go away. Um, Mode's partying back there. Hansel's, Hansel's in deep focus pouring those drinks. He's taking pictures and Anne's just, you know, on me. I decided to see how much I could take before losing it. Three seconds. Firecracker armed and ready, firing. Not satisfied with just one, Jeff held a firecracker in each hand and threw both at the same time. Oh, wow. Bang, the firecracker loud enough to burst eardrums, made Mo jump into the air. Seven seconds. Dell, let's take a picture. In the midst of the chaos, Anne went up to me holding a camera with a selfie stick. This might be the only time I ever get to experience such a chaotic birthday party. 15 seconds. Ah, right. We can't forget your birthday shot. Raising his index finger to himself, Hansel ran and brought back a myriad, a marat, whatever, of different bottles and started mixing cocktails without even checking the labels. Dill, do you want me to add some of that rip whipping cream from your face too? 25 seconds. Just, let's just have five more seconds. Just five more. So I've already grown two years older. I need to keep myself from getting angry for at least 30 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. That was when. Del, happy birthday. As if counting down together with me, Moe stretched out his short arms and handed me something. What's this? Is this for me? Mo was holding a tiny clay figure. It had brown hair and was wearing a brown trench coat. It's you. It was definitely not the most well-made clay figure I'd seen. But thinking about how in the world Mode could have made that with its short arms, I couldn't help but smile. Oh my god, Mode! Thank you so much. I'm so touched. You're the best. I hugged Mo tightly and I could feel my rage meter going back down to the normal levels. I promise, I'll get you some carrot oil as a New Year's present. Mo turned around and gave Jeff a sharp look. Oh, oh, why are you looking at me like that, Mode? What is this, some kind of robot union? Sweet, are you going to take over the world now? Yes. Please spare me. Well, I just died. Jeff, the mood is weird. Please do a toast or something. Jeff, who had just been enjoying watching the ruckus, came to his senses and grabbed a glass. All right, a lot of things happened recently, but we all made it safely into the new century. I wish you all the best in the new year and... Great job, squad. Good job. Great job, everyone. Nice job. Good job. Everyone joined the toast, sharing a wholesome vibe, and I slowly looked around at everyone. Great job. I look forward to keep working with you. We all smiled at each other and raised our glasses up. Congratulations on finishing the epilogue. Now, try maxing out the affection of the character. You can get a special memory chip by filling up all the affection. Yep, that is my next goal, which I will do eventually. Okay, now that we're done with Mayday Memory, Let's just, let me just give you guys my little review of it, I guess. So I think that was a really good ending to the story. Del finally found out who she was and we celebrated by having a birthday party for her. That was very sweet. Characters, very memorable. But with this game, I feel, I feel like I personally, I feel like I was more into the story than the boys, which is a really good thing. But it was, too, I, I couldn't actually choose the guy because I was so into the story. But you know, I think, I think I would have, well, now that I've played the game and I know the story, I think I like Hansel the most. I think Hansel is my favorite, actually. First it was Ann, but that kind of disappeared. <laughs> so our villain, Adrian, he was a pretty good villain. And I do, I do appreciate the fact that he, you can't save somebody who doesn't want to be saved. That's a fact. You can't save somebody. And I like how Del wasn't able to save Adrian because that's realistic, you know? Adrian did not want to be saved. He wants to rot away in prison. That's his decision. You can't save somebody like that. 
I appreciate Lucy James doing that. Not giving him a little redemption, you know? Del is a really good protagonist, I think. I really enjoyed playing as her. She was very funny. Um, not confident. What's the word I'm looking for? She doesn't tolerate people messing with her. I like that the most about her. Out of, out of all the Lucy Dream games I've played so far, so that's Dangerous Fellows, Mayday Memory, and currently Havenless also, which I'm almost done with. They have, Lucy Dream has definitely put the most effort into uh, Mayday Memory. They really did. Because, I'm not just talking because, I'm not just talking about the typos. Dangerous Fellow has typos. Uh, Havenless has a lot of typos. They, um, there was like no, no typos, I don't think, really. I don't think, I can't remember a single typo that stood out. The writing, the story. Because I feel like Lucy Dreams, I was, like they they keep pushing out games. You know, like they're currently, they might just release like Blood Kiss right now because they they're always pushing out games. But I think they took the most time into Made in Memory, and I appreciate that. So overall, I like this game a lot. I do need to uh pick a guy <laughs> to do the epilogue or get their epilogue. Tell me what you guys think of the game. Tell me what you guys think of Lucy Dreams, and. Thank you for watching me play this game. It has been a nice journey. I will see you guys. I'll see you guys on Friday with uh, Obey Me. And yeah. Bye-bye.